Mina, Konbanwa, Jesus Freaking Gamer here. Here to deliver another Sunday message and well, again, it's going to be one of those reflection things, one of those things to make you think, one of those things to make you reflect. Hopefully, it'll be encouraging and informative. Slightly dark topic, but one we will all need to face one day. We're going to go with Deuteronomy chapter 34. Go ahead and start off there. I've been in Deuteronomy, so I'll just kind of build on this principle that I'm going to talk about from here. Starting in verse 1, Then Moses went up from the plains of Moab to Mount Nebo to the top of Pisgah, which is across from Jericho. And the Lord showed him all the land of Gilead as far as Dan. And it goes on to mention several other tribes and many other things that Moses sees in the Promised Land. Skip down to verse 4. By all means, read those verses for yourselves to see if what I said is true. Then the Lord said to him, This is the land of which I swore to give Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, saying, I will give it to your descendants. I have caused you to see it with your eyes, but you shall not cross over there. So Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there in the land of Moab, according to the word of the Lord. Earlier on, it was at the um, waters of Meribah, I believe. I'm actually checking this in here. And it doesn't say in this chapter, so go ahead and check by me. I believe it was at the waters of Meribah where Moses was commanded to speak to the rock that water may come out of it. But instead he was angry with the children of Israel and he struck the rock. And God said, because you didn't glorify me in front of the people, you will not cross over into the promised land. So Moses died. And that kind of uh, brings me to the topic that I want to talk about, death. It's interesting what got me thinking about this. Um... I think it's pretty obvious to anyone who likes any of the big name YouTubers. My three favorites are Markiplier, PewDiePie, Jacksepticeye, and I, I think probably most fanboys and fangirls dream of like, especially if you're on YouTube, doing a gaming session with them. And What would it take to get there, to get to that level? And it kind of reminded me of the current one of the current playthroughs that Mark... Senpai, yes, I'm a weeaboo, even in my preaching, that Mark Senpai is doing with, I think it's um, Slod Leech? If I said that, and I believe his real name is Patrick, doing a playthrough of Portal 2 right now, because he, um, he got a hold of the Make-A-Wish Foundation, and his wish was to spend time with Markiplier. And other people have done that with, uh, I know a few other people have done that with Mark, a few people have done that with PewDiePie as well. I don't know about Jack, I haven't heard about it, possibly. I just don't know. And you know, if the Make-A-Wish Foundation is in touch with you, you're probably in really bad shape. Some people are dying. Some people are probably not going to live that much longer. And it's a bit depressing to think about, but I got to thinking, you know, well, if something horrible like cancer was to hit me, my Make-A-Wish probably would be to spend time with Markiplier. Honestly, it probably would. That would be really, really cool. Better yet, I would have a full, I would like do one of those Gmod prop hunts. It would be me, Markiplier, PewDiePie, and Jacksepticeye. If I was dying of cancer, God forbid in Jesus' name, and somehow the Make-A-Wish Foundation got in contact with me, that would probably be my wish. Um, hopefully, Stalich isn't going th any through anything nearly that horrible. Um, his I know um, Mark Senpai did something with him a year a few, or a few years back. So apparently what he has isn't fatal, at least I certainly hope not. Um, seems to be doing well. Uh, video seems to be putting out videos on a pretty regular basis. So seems to be doing all right, um, at least as far as life expectancy goes. I don't know what brought him there. Um, definitely prayers and best wishes with him and I'm glad it was so cool to see Mark do a follow-up video with him. Mark kept track of him. It wasn't just that one time. And that's awesome. If someone needs your help or you connect with someone, it's good to follow up with that person. Stay in touch with that person. I really, really appreciated just seeing that part too. Um, it's like, yeah, I saw the guy a few years ago. By the way, I'm still in contact with him. I just think that's really awesome. So, what would it take to um, get access to being with one of those guys or having a full-on session with them? Well, probably something pretty bad. And they're busy guys. You can't, and as human beings, you know, you can't just hang out with millions upon millions of people on a regular basis. 
human beings simply can't physically do that. So I certainly understand, you know, if someone is in very bad shape, kind of like pastors, you know, the people that the pastors hang out with, usually they're not in the best of shape. I mean, they have, pastors will have their friends, of course, like any other human being, people that they spend time with on a regular basis. But if it comes time to spending time with one of their congregants and they have to choose because there are so many people, and by the way, when you get a few hundred people, just in my years of being at the church, I've noticed that when the church grows to even a few hundred, hundred people, you can't just spend time with a pastor whenever you like. You have to set up an appointment. You have to set up a time. That time has to be regulated because he has to regulate his time. He's got to make time for not only you, but for all the other people that are in his congregation as well. You're not the only human being on the face of the planet. You're not the only one that's important. So I get that. So definitely if you like, and there are pastors who are, you know, there are over tens of thousands. Um, I believe there are some churches that go even into the hundreds of thousands. Those aren't very common in the world just because obviously it's hard to gather hundreds of thousands of people on a regular basis. That would take a lot of space and a lot of, you know, just, well, space. And bathrooms and stuff like that to hold that many people would take a lot of space and time to get everyone together and time to file out it would just be crazy and there's no way the pastor could hang out with each and every one of those people one on one so you've got to regulate your time and usually that's done by need makes good sense right those who are at the highest level of need those are the ones who get attention so yeah, if, if, you, um, if you're with the Make-A-Wish Foundation, you're like, yeah, I want to hang out with this guy, it would, quite frankly, take a real douchebag or, or else just an, something insanely horrible going on in his personal or her personal life for them to say, nope, I'm going to ignore that person's wish. You know, yeah, they're probably going to die in a few months, but I ain't got time for that. They'd either be a douchebag or they would have something really serious going on in their own life that they just absolutely had no choice but to take care of. So need is a very perfectly good point. So I really, no offense Mark Senpai, if you ever happen to see this, I don't want to hang out with you that bad. I'd rather avoid cancer than spend time with you. Hopefully that's not offensive. But that got me to thinking. I, there, I really was, there really was a point to this. I'm coming back to that. We are all dying. Every single one of us. And it's kind of a duh when you think about it, like, well, yeah, we're all going to die one day. But think about that for a minute. You're dying right now. You're getting older, right? Time is passing, right? Now, if you're Enoch or Elijah, please share your secret with me. I'd love to skip out on death. I've even prayed to the Lord, Lord, I'd like to get to that point and experience something cool like that. Now, ultimately, it doesn't really matter whether... I'm raptured up into heaven or whether I die. My eternity is with the Lord and this life and this body are temporary. You know, when I go to heaven, I don't think I'm going to, I know that Enoch and Elijah aren't spending all of eternity in these flesh bodies. Um, I know that because 1 Corinthians 15 makes it very plain that the mortal will put on immortality, the corruptible will put on incorruption. 1 Corinthians 15, check it out. I'm not holding your hand. And even once I learn how to edit, I'm not going to print it on the screen that you see here. I'm looking to make sure that I'm within the camera angle lens, and I'm kind of off here. Anyway, there. I'm not going to put it there. Even when I learn how to edit and do cool YouTube stuff like that, because I want you guys to learn. I want you guys to look it up. I want you guys to look behind me and check. I'm human. I can be mistaken. So look behind me. Check it out. Think for yourself. But even without a Bible, even without the Bible passages, it's pretty obvious we're all going to die. And for those of you who do want a Bible passage in Hebrews, look up the chapter and verse for yourself. It says it is appointed unto man once to die and then the judgment. Obviously, Enoch and Elijah are exceptions to that. Are there a few other exceptions out there? Maybe. I think it'd be cool if I was one. I think that's a cool goal to aspire for. I'm not going to give up on that. I told you, I'm one of those weird, charismatic, non-denominational guys. Kind of hyper-spiritual. Believe in the prophecies and the healings and the tongues and stuff. I believe in all that stuff. So, just roll with it. And if you don't believe in it and you're still listening to me, God bless you. Thank you for putting up with me. And I'm assuming something good is coming out of this to impact your life and make you... 
Think about things that are important or things you wouldn't normally think about and that this is beneficial to you in some way. So, awesome. Back to the point, we're all going to die. Short of being Enoch or Elijah or some rarity like that, we're all going to die. We're all dying right now. We're all dying. Now, obviously, some people are in more pain than others. Some people are closer to death than others, but that doesn't change the fact that we're all dying. We're all headed down that road. It's not something mankind will ever find a way out of. And that's, of course, because death is, re is a result of sin. The um, physical death is a result of an inward spiritual problem that we're born with. We get it from our parents. They were sinners too. Their parents were sinners. Their parents were sinners. All the way back to the first parents, Adam and Eve. We're all sinners. We're all going to be born to die. It's so weird how I was thinking about like something so positive, like spending time with Mark Senpai, and I was just like, what would it take to do that? Probably dying. And it just got me thinking, well, I'm dying right now. You know, I may, I may not be in horrible straits, but and I'm not. I feel like the Lord's blessed me tremendously. I feel pretty decent right now. Not perfect. I've got a few things here and there, but nothing horrendous. Nothing that puts me in touch with the Make-A-Wish Foundation. I'm blessed. I'm thankful. I am dying, though, and so are you. And while mankind will never come up with a cure for that, um, anyone who's bought one of those cryogenic freezing things, thinking that one day death, death will be overcome, please save your money. Please save your money. It's not worth it. Yes, there's actually a group out in California that cryofreezes people that die of chronic diseases so that one day when the chronic diseases are fixed, when science gets that far, they can resuscitate the body, cure the disease. So my question becomes, okay, well, what are you going to do about the whole dead part? Like, are we going to cure that too? We're not. Obviously, that's a scam. I can't believe some rich people, and it is expensive to get that done, to cryo-freeze your body. It's expensive. It's a huge waste of money. There's not going to be a cure for death. If we cure cancer, that's awesome. I hope we do. But we're not going to cure death. It's not going to happen. We're born dying. We're born to die, even. And if you're an atheist or you, and you don't believe that there's anything past this life, it sucks to be you. I personally do not want to be in your shoes. I mean, this life is it? <laughs> Just burn it all to the ground. Just get it over with right now. Oh my gosh, how incredibly pointless and meaningless is that kind of an existence? Yeah, we have our time here for some, you know, if you're lucky, 70 to 80 years. Because there's no gods, so there have to be luck. But past that, <laughs> there's nothing. There's absolutely nothing. Now, if that were the truth, I'd be on here like the Amazing Atheist and all those other atheistic YouTube channels, and I'd be like, yep, uh, we're, we're, we're done. This is it. Live it up while you can. Of course, I probably wouldn't be in YouTube. I'd probably be in jail for several illegal activities. Not going to go into that. I wouldn't care very much if there wasn't a Jesus and a God who loved me and died for me and gave himself for me and gave a reason to live past this puny, pathetic existence here on Earth. I'm sorry. In the grand scheme of things, we're nothing. Even the universe itself, by natural law, even the entire universe will want the heat death of the universe. Google that. Everything will one day disappear and be gone, and that'll be it. All of reality will perish as we know it, and there... There's no God, there's no point or meaning to any of it. It's one cosmic accident. It's one giant mistake. It's one, huh, well, I'll be. We're here for a little while. Cool. And that's it. I don't believe we're here by mistake. I don't even believe you're watching this video by mistake. If you're watching this video, I know this is morbid. I know it's, for some people, this is hard to think about. And for others, you may be a little closer to that door than you would like to be, than you even want to think about. I bring this up because it is inevitable. 
And the purpose, the ultimate purpose of what Jesus came to do was to forgive sin and to guarantee us eternal life with him. I mean, that's kind of the point. In my opinion, the point, the point just to address the atheist one more time, if, even, if you're even still, if you're an atheist and you've watched the video to this point, thank you very much for that. Um, maybe you're just doing it to troll, maybe you're just doing it for the fun of it, you have nothing better to do with your time. That works. I'll take it. But if, there's, if there is no God and there's nothing else here, then everything is just so pointless. Everything is so completely pointless. Do what you can while you're here, and that's it. And I don't believe that. I don't believe that for a second. I think there's a lot more to this existence than just that. I don't see all of creation being here in the order that it's here. I don't see that as being an accident. I don't see that for a second. And, and I think there's some very good reasons to believe that this is a creation and not an accident. I wouldn't be a Christian, I don't think, if I believed otherwise. Even evolution is so completely scientifically impossible statistically, it would take a miracle to make it happen. So even if you believe in evolution, and I personally don't, there's something, there's something spinning, spinning the cogs, there's something turning the gears, there's something making this happen. And the answer is Jesus. And the purpose of religion is not to just grab people's money and make them scared of death. Death is there. Fear is there. Religion's there to provide some answers to that. Not a way out. Like I said, we're all going to die. I'm not here saying that I'm guaranteeing your dead are going to be raised. What I'm saying is your sins will be forgiven, and when you do die, you'll be with the Lord Jesus forever. And one day, you actually will get your body back. Back to 1 Corinthians 15 again. There will be a resurrection of the body. Even Job mentions, in my flesh, I will see God. So even in the Old Testament, there was knowledge of a resurrection. Daniel mentions that as well. That there would be a resurrection to life and a resurrection to damnation. And we all deserve that resurrection to damnation because we're all born in sin and we walk in sin. We've all made mistakes. We've all done things that are bad. We all know we have. And according to the Bible, because of that sin, that's where death comes from. That's why this life is temporary and short and sometimes very, very painful. Very painful. So I'd like to invite you right now, if you haven't accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, to do just that. Jesus Christ, the God of the universe, came to this world about 2,000 years ago, lived a perfect life. He died on a cruel cross to forgive everyone's sin. And then he, ro he rose from the dead three days later, guaranteeing eternal life to anyone and everyone who would follow him and believe in him. God not only created you, he came to this earth and died for you to redeem you or buy you back to himself. That's how much he loves you, and that's how much he cares about you, despite the fact that we're all sinners. So if this message, if this message is making sense, if this is giving you something to think about, and you're feeling just in your heart, you know, I, I do believe there's something after this. And I don't want to die in the state that I'm in right now. Good news, you don't have to. That's what Jesus came for. Right now, just in your own words and in your own way, Shoot up a prayer to him. Tell him that you do believe that he died on the cross for you, that, he, that you do believe he rose again from the dead. Tell him that you want to meet him now, before you die, and that you look forward to seeing him in person when you do die, and that you're thankful for the price that he paid to redeem you to himself. And if you want something a little more guided, maybe a, a model prayer to follow, pray this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, thank you that I saw this random YouTuber preaching today. Thank you that you did come to the world, die on the cross, and rose, rise again from the dead. I believe that, Jesus, that you died for me and that you rose from the dead. And that one day I can be with you forever in heaven. Please forgive me for my sins. Please help me to live for you. And thank you so much 
that you've heard this prayer and that now I'm one of your children. Thank you so much, Jesus. Amen. And if you just prayed that prayer, you're now my brother or my sister in Christ, and that's awesome. Welcome to the family. Do yourself a favor. Grab a Bible. Start reading it every day. Start talking to God. Doesn't have to be anything specific. Doesn't have to be anything proper or decent or what you imagine is proper and decent. Just start talking to Him. That's prayer. Prayer really is that simple. And find a church that also believes that Jesus Christ died on the cross and rose again. And that He is the God of this universe. Find some people around, that believe, around you that believe the same thing as you. And think about baptism as well. Because that symbolizes how we died with Christ and were raised to walk in the newness of life. That's something else to think about. It symbolizes how we died to ourselves and, how, and now we're li we died to our sin, now we're living for Him. It also symbolizes how one day we will die, but we will be raised with Him one day. It's awesome if you just join the family of God. Welcome, welcome, welcome. That's so awesome if you just accepted the Lord. And to everyone watching this video, whether you believe what I said or not, whether you, you're already a believer, just became a believer, or you're just a troll wasting some time on YouTube, thanks for watching this video. Thank you for giving me your time. I appreciate that a lot. Thank you so much for watching this video. And if you did like it, hit that like button. If you just like to hit that dislike button and type in the comments on um, whatever comment, whether it's trollish or a legitimate inquiry that you want to type in. And please share this video with someone, whether you think they just need a good laugh or whether you think they need the Lord Jesus Christ, whether you're atheist or Christian or something else, share this video. And if you, and if you want to, by all means, subscribe, join the freaks. And um, I love you guys very, very much. God bless each and every one of you.